is the fellowship with God, the relationship. Because it's all about relationship. When God made humans, He did not make us so He could start or have a religion. He did not make us for a business. He made us for family. God is love. And He wants that love relationship with people. And some of us, we haven't had the revelation of God's love. And so what we do is we, we kind of uh, deceive ourselves and others by like presenting our best side forward. Because we think that if people really knew us, they wouldn't love us. <clears throat> and I got news for you. God will love you the same right now, in the past and in the future. He does not change. Think, about, think of it this way. The worst thing that you ever did while you were doing that, God loved you the same then as He does now. Correct. His love was, was not changed based on your actions. And that's, that's a trip to think about. Because we as humans, our love is um, changing depending on what people do or say. But God's love is powerful, it's eternal. The Bible says that when I was still a sinner, Christ died for me. So that love is there, it's out there. And there's a lot of antichrist spirits that try to get people into religion. They try to get them into uh, dogma and form and ritual and away from relationship. Satan is deathly scared of you having a relationship with Jesus Christ. Because it destroys him on every level. It destroys his works. And he, the demons and all that can't be redeemed. Jesus Christ took on your flesh and blood so flesh and blood could take on His image and be with Him in heaven. He's in you, you're in Him. He's at the right hand of the Father. You're in Him, seated in heavenly places. He's also in you, here on earth. And that's, that's a mystery. But it's the truth. I can't do the mathematical equation on it, but it's true. And so you're in Christ, and Christ is in you. Amen. And so I'm going to read a little bit about out of John here. It says, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled concerning the word of life. And they're talking about Jesus. The life was manifested, and we have seen and bear witness, and declare to you that eternal life, which was with the Father, and was manifested to us, that which we have seen and heard, we declare to you, that you also may have fellowship with us. So he's saying, man, I've touched the word, the living word. And you know, John was, when he writes, he's like, I'm the one that Jesus loved. <clears throat> you know? And it says that his head was on Jesus' chest. You know, he was beholding. He was embracing Christ. Right. He understood it. He's saying, I've held the living word. I've seen, I've touched right. eternity. But I'm declaring it to you because it's, Jesus also prayed for those that would hear through their word. Even the ones that haven't seen, like us, we've heard in our hearts, have, have, have been sparked with the Holy Ghost to know that this is truth, and we've come. That which we have seen and heard, we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Christ, Jesus Christ. And these things we write to you, that your joy may be full. This is a message which you have heard from Him, and declare to you that God is light, and in Him there is no darkness at all. Man, I like that. Not even none. No darkness. Now when you spend time with the Lord and you get in His presence, the darkness gets washed out of your soul. Your spirit's already born again. Your spirit is in heavenly places. It's righteous and holy. But your soul, your mind, your will, your intellect, your emotions, the battle's in the mind. Yes. And so, when you're spending time with God, the darkness gets washed out of your mind and heart. There was a brother uh, that came into the, the uh, men's home, you know, who, who had a lot of struggle um, with lust. And so, I gave him three scriptures to speak, and I said, speak these every day for a half hour. And he did, about day 20, all the, all the, the demonic uh, lust and all that broke off of him because of the light of God that he was speaking. Just three scriptures. We never said, come out, go. We never drove the, drove, drove the devils out. I just give him three scriptures and say, just walk the floor, half hour a day. Uh, and he did. He said, and later he came back and said, that's the boring, most boring thing I've ever done. But, unlike day 20, all of it left. You know? 
Praise the Lord. Because it says my words are spirit and they are life. And so, um, you know, uh, that's, that's what, there's no darkness. We lie, okay, in Him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all righteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make Him a liar, and His word is not in us. My little children, these things I write to you, so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, let him have, let, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he himself is the competition for our sins. And not ours only, but also for the whole world. Now isn't that just the most mighty and wonderful message that you've ever heard and seen? Yes. That it's for the whole world. Yes, when we go in and we're talking to the guys in El Salvador that have a lot of murders under their belt in the MS-13... I'm able to go in there and tell them that God, God's uh, blood is shed for you. You're valuable and you're important because of Christ. And that He loves you and you can be forgiven. That's a different message than, hey, there's no hope for you and we're going to lock you up for the rest of your life. And they may never get out in their natural life. But did you know that many Americans are walking around doing life without the possibility of parole in their emotions, in their heart? Full of anger and hate. I'm talking even this morning in this room, believers who have come to Christ, and maybe you you pass from death to life, but you still have some darkness in your soul. You still have a smile that you put on your face, but inside you're hurting and dying, and you're not crying out to God, nor you're being transparent. You're just glossing it over, and it's not going away because you you got to be like the blind Bartimaeus. Son of David, have mercy on me. Hey, be quiet. We don't want to hear from you. And it says he got louder. Son of David, have mercy on me. If you cry out to God, he will free you from the stuff inside that's still there that you act like it's not, but it is. Or if you're born again, but you're carrying the weight. You're carrying the pain. You're carrying the anger. You're carrying the loss, the regret, the shame. Man, lay it down at the altar. Right. Lay it down. You've been carrying the burden far too long. And you can lay it down at His feet if you cry out to God with all your heart. Please. If you have a supplication and you're more concerned about getting right than who's watching or what people will think, then you'll be free. Yes. Maybe the first thing that you need to ask God for is to free you from the fear of man. Yeah, come on now. The fear of man is a seductor. It's a dangerous one. And it will lead you right down to destruction. Right. We need to fear God, not man. Yeah. We don't need to impress man. That's right. That's right. That's if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. Amen to that. Amen to that. You ever see somebody walk around and they act like they don't have any... <laughs> any um, <laughs> You know, they were looking down their nose at folks. Like the guy that was praying and beating his chest, asking God to have mercy on him. And uh, there's a Pharisee looked down on him and said, God, I thank you that I'm not like this person. And Jesus said, God doesn't even hear your prayer because you cry. Your prayer is going to get to heaven. And this guy, he is. There was once a man in South Africa who was a drunk. And he came into a, a meeting, a new believers meeting. And they went around the room and they were having these prayers. Angus was talking about this. And he was saying that this prayer was one of the most uh, powerful prayers that he's experienced to this day. And the guy, the guy's dead now. He was older then. And, um, people were praying. And there were some pastors there that, you know, they were praying around the new believers class, everyone was praying for a minute to start the meeting, the guy was like, just crying out, Lord, help me, that was all his prayer was, but it was from the heart, genuine, right. and a true cry, 
And God's presence came, and that man got set free, and he, you know, he got, he got hit. Not, not elegance is what the Lord is looking for. He's looking for That's sincerity, right. transparency. Yeah. He's looking for us not to polish a turd, Hello. but to flush the turd down the toilet. Right. If we say that we have not sinned, we deceive ourselves. My little children, these things I write to you, so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, and he himself is a propitiation for our sins, not only ours, but for the whole world. Now, by this we know that we know him, if we keep his commandments. He who says, I know him, and does not keep his commandments, is a liar. Come on. So if you say you know him today... And you don't, you don't keep his commandments, you're a liar. Well, but now listen to this. The Bible says, be perfect as I'm perfect. Right? And the Bible also says that love is about bond of perfection. <coughs> and didn't Jesus say, a new commandment I give you? That you love one another? So the commandment that he's talking about is that if you're not loving God and loving your brother, then... You're not his. It's not the guy that just got saved and all of a sudden, you know, he might have an issue come up in the flesh. He's talking about the commandment of love. Because even the man that just got saved with Christ in him is going to have a heart towards God and a heart towards his fellow brother. Now, he may, he may have some issues to work out. You know? I have had some friends that have been pretty rough and they've been giving their lives to the Lord and they still knocked a few guys out. And they got right and they're not doing that anymore. They're not brawling. But they were really the Lord's. They just got into the flesh for a minute. That's not who they were. So be careful how you don't judge with the sight of eyes. Don't be religious in your judgments. God looks at the heart. Not necessarily what's going on with them like failing. Don't be the guy accusing the finger and saying, hey, you know what? You're not keeping God's commandments. You're not of Him. No, 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 no. You can have a guy totally doing what looks to be right on the outside his heart sideways. Yeah. I'd rather have a dude that really loves God and he's struggling with his flesh. He might be new. Now, if you're in the, in the Lord for years and years, grow up. You know, you, sh you shouldn't be throwing your coffee cup out the window anymore or you know, cussing people out when they're cutting you off in traffic. You know, this should be something that's a little more like in the beginning, right? But let's not get into a religious accusation mindset. Let's lift our brothers up because the devil comes to accuse. That's right. I remember this one brother put this uh, sign on his uh, car that says, Honk if you love Jesus. And you really say, I forgot how all these guys honk and then you flip them out for something. <laughs> Lord, let us be a witness. <laughs> I have another buddy, his name's Bruce. I'm not going to say his last name. I don't know if his name was on. He was a remodeler. And man, times were tough. Nobody was getting any jobs. Things were really tight. And this guy got blessed with his job. And this person was tailgating this construction man the whole time. And it's out there like by Beaver Creek. There's a Y in the road. And you stop. And then you turn. And man, he gets his finger out there and gives him a good, you know, flipping off. And... And it was, you know, they weren't born again. He was, he was newly saved, but this, this uh, person in the car behind him was his customer. Uh, just giving him his job, you know. And, uh, of course, he learned a lesson. <laughs> one, one time, I was up here in Seattle, and there was a guy named Reverend Don Klein. Reverend Don Klein used to get on the radio and be like, Well, neighbor, <coughs> praise the Lord. <coughs> we had an 18 Bless our native brothers this week. You should have seen those little Indians as we gave them the best Christmas they've ever had. What have you done for your red man lately? No, so I'm up there in Sherry's and I'm like talking to these pastors. I'm like, have you ever heard this guy named Reverend Don Klein? And he talks like this on his voice. And wouldn't you know that his family is sitting in the booth right next to us? And I was sitting there making fun of this man's voice. I didn't like his ministry, but I learned my lesson, you know. 
the Lord, you know, <laughs> don't mess with his service. And it made fun of the boys. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Anyway, I don't know what that had to do with the message, but. No. <laughs> That's just extra. Now, by this time, we know that. Now, by this, we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. What is his commandment? It's about love. Mr. Love. It's about love. He who says, I know him, and does not keep his commandment, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, and truly the love of God is perfected in him. See here? He's talking about the love of God is perfected in him. Because as the love of God is working in a man's heart, he's not going to stay that way. You can put a show on for a season. But, listen, if you really fall in love with Jesus, as the years go by... It gets sweeter. Oh, yeah. Somebody yeah. said to me, hey, do you get burned out? No. I get a little frustrated with people because, you know, when you're ministering to a lot of hurt people, you know, and they haven't forgiven or got healed, they bleed on a lot of people that haven't hurt them. That's right. Just because of wounded, you know. But if you get manifested in the love of God, then you are an agent that can see these people be changed. Weren't you and I just like this and worse? Right. Wow. Didn't, didn't, didn't we, I remember, I remember in my mind, just like it was yesterday, of me role-playing, going to murder my dad. Thinking it was my idea when it was a demon. I was walking in a wheat field, I know exactly where it is, in Aurora, Oregon, on the end of Fry Road, and I was contemplating this or running away. And these demons were on me heavy. And my mom was always saying, hey, you got to forgive. My mom and my grandma are prayer warriors. And I got a heritage of some, man, I got some heritage of some mighty people. But we got some real outlaws in our family, too. We got a bit of both, the in-laws and the outlaws. And um, I remember the love of God just cracking me like a nut and turning me inside out Amen. in a wheat field. And his, his, his power coming and setting me free in demons. And, and uh, totally changed my heart. I, I remember sitting in Snake River Penitentiary, getting ready to preach, and looking up and seeing a guy that was doing life without the possibility of parole, playing the guitar. And the Lord telling me, if it wasn't for my grace, you'd be an innate by itself for doing murder from a broken heart. <coughs> And so I, I'm on um, a real grace trip today because with my background and my personality, I was a dangerous situation, an explosion waiting to happen. And without God coming in and, and, and pulling all the, the wickedness and hate and anger and murder out of me, um, I wouldn't be here today. I mean, I would like to believe that I would have come to the light and been serving him in the penitentiary somewhere. But I'm thankful, man, to not be locked up. I'm thankful to have four girls that love God and a wife that I'm married to one time, not five marriages or six, like my dad, with men and women, because of the Father's, the eternal Father's influence in my life. Now, if you look at your natural father, and, and, and my blood, the blood that's through, through my veins is not the blood from my natural dad, it's my heavenly Father that has come. And he said, no, you're to be a dad like this. You're to do it this way. And so even though many of us, you know, some of us have had bad relationships with our fathers and have gone through things, um, we don't have an excuse now that we've come to him because we have him, you know, here. And so um, I'm just thankful that God's love had transformed my heart because outside of his grace and mercy, I would be um, locked up or maybe dead or Maybe, you know, who knows? I was a real, I was not in a good headspace. And I think some of you can identify with me who've gone through some abuse, who've gone through some things where God comes in and He heals you and He touches your heart and He changes you. And um, it says, He who abides in Him ought Himself also to walk just as He walked. <laughs> Man, isn't that so good? It's just straight. Now that is doctrine right there. People will say, well, no, that's not a deep theological deal. No, 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 that's, that's as heavy and as weighty as it gets. 
That if you, that if you abide in Him, that means you're in Him and He's in you. And that's verse uh, 6, chapter 2, verse 6. He who says he abides in Him ought himself also to walk just as he walked. I was, I was there in the, in the penitentiary and I was preaching and I told them, hey, none of you guys are legit Christians. And there's probably 150 comics in them. Some of those dudes look like a bench press, 600 pounds. And I'm calling them out. And, and Joe's like, what the heck, man? And this guy in the back, <coughs> you know, double middle finger or whatever, the middle finger. That's, you know that you're going to get going right there when you're, when you're preaching. And, and I was calling them out and I was saying, hey, you guys don't really have the love of God in you. Because you're not, you know, you're not sitting with uh, people of the other race. The Mexicans, the whites, that, 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 that is all, all spread out. Right. I said, that might be how it is in the big yard. But in the church, if you say you love God, and you don't sit or love the brother who you can't see, now you know they pay more of a price because there's probably people looking in there and they might try to you know, shank them later or whatever if they break those lines. But are we going to fear of man or God? Are we going to really walk this thing out? The one native brother was worshiping with everything, with the plagues, and he's like, they threatened to kill me if I keep worshiping. I'm like, don't stop. But then I was thinking later, my neck's not the one on the line. I'm going to get out of here. And this guy's going to be left. So I prayed for protection on him. But he had an anointing. And that was a spiritual battle. And he's yeah. still alive. The devil didn't kill him. The devil's a liar. Mm -hmm. But anyways, um, this right here, it says, He who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk just as he has walked. Hey, are you calling yourself a Christian today? I do. And that means we got to walk just as he walked. Yeah. Let that just sink in. Mm -hmm. You know, just let that sink in your heart. And now, Ruben, uh, if you can play this song. I want to play the library? Um, sure. <coughs> Does it have lyrics? No. I don't think so. Oh, you, you just pick out one that you like. I don't know. I haven't heard this song. Oh, I, now, before we play this, sometimes my daughter Mercedes was saying that she she didn't cry. <coughs> she's like, Dad, I don't cry very often. And then my other daughter, Whitney, she's always crying and laughing. <laughs> and so um, I said, well, so then Uncle Phil, he played this song. My eyes are dry. My faith is cold. This is a song about a crusty old uh, cobbler who's maybe been religious and maybe refreshed in the Lord, you know? And so, um, it's a song that Keith Green uh, wrote about, like, having a dryness in his walk with the Lord to where there wasn't a sensitivity or brokenness. Yeah. And so I just want, I mean, I just felt like this good song might, you know, touch on you guys because I feel like the Lord's wanting to do something with the message this morning is get healing in your heart from, you know, um, and, and that, this is going to be between you and God. It's not really the altar thing as you walk, as you go away. It's going to be you. I mean, you're going to the altar, but it's going to be you basically coming to a place where um, you're asking the Lord to restore, you know, and renew and make you tender again and take off the shell. Right. Give, give you eyes for the guy that's not saved down at 7 Eleven instead of just hurrying about your business to go share it with him. You know what I mean? To 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 take time to uh, you know impart into your kids and smell the roses and you know. Anyways, um, can you light the lights, Ronnie? And after this song's done, if you need prayer, I'm here. Or you guys can go. I'm going to go to a church in um, Woodland today. They're having an outside service. So they've been asking me to go. I got to take off to go there. <coughs> Thank you. 